Soulmate with Brian. So you came for G2G, and then they went back to Texas. But you stayed in Korea, and you were part of a duo called Cryogen. Mm -hmm. Can you share that um, transition and um, what it was like to debut as a debut as a K-pop duo and be in the industry? Yeah, um, everyone's kind of shocked right now. Uh, 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 suddenly, you know, I you know I was playing guitar in the back, and now we're talking about my K-pop career. Yes. So what happened? <laughs> so I was in the back, and then. I became the G2G worship leader, and, and our band, we toured all over Korea. We reached thousands of students in Korea, and then the band all went back to Texas. And I had a choice to make. Am I going to continue the calling here in my motherland as a Nehemiah to pray for Korea and to be a missionary here in Korea? Or am I going to go back to Texas and graduate, get my degree, um, but I, I ended up staying? And I felt like God had another purpose. I, I felt like he wasn't done with me in Korea. So I started a new group called Cry, K-R-Y. Korea, revive yourself. 한국이요, 부응하자. We made a new group called Cry. And if we wanted to reach the non-Christians outside of the church, because even back then, the young generation were all leaving the church. And so I wanted to be a light and a salt in the world, in Korea. So I prayed, Lord, let me become a K-pop star. I want to go into the world and be a K-pop star. And when all these non-Christian kids, they see me, I'm going to say, Jesus loves you. Amen. And I found a K-pop company that assigned me as a K-pop singer called, not just Cry, but Cry Gen. We added the generation from G2G. So K-R-Y. And, and generation. So after a couple of years, you know, I went on all the TV shows in, in South Korea, met a Korean idol group called um, Sonya Shide, <laughs> Girls' Generation. And um, that was amazing to see them because, uh, you know, I felt like it, one of them would be my <laughs> wife. But that didn't work out. Yeah, you know, it was amazing to be able to tour, you know, even as a K pop singer. And through that, I was able to reach out to more non-Christians and, I guess, um, and share the gospel with, with the youth of, of Korea. Awesome. So you're in the church, and then now you're outside of the church walls. You're in entertainment and on, on behind cameras, um, in front of just the public. If you can share some difficulties that you had um, while reaching them or just being in the industry, in entertainment, if yeah, you can give yeah. some tips yeah. for um, people that want to go into this route. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's really difficult because... If you go in the world, you know, it's easy to be tempted and, and you, f you forget the promises that you, you made with God. When you make the money, when you become famous, yeah, that's when our faith really shines or I, I, or I guess we, get, we can be tempted. And, but, you know, God, he's a promise keeper. Amen. Amen. God, he never breaks his promises. Mm. And I wanted to keep my promise with God. And so the first day of, of K-pop, my contract... The Kaksa contract, I added two sentences and I wrote number one, I will never perform at a club or a bar. I, I, you can make a lot of money with, the, with those events. And I didn't want to compromise because Korea, you know, if you, I mean, I'm not going to talk about clubs tonight, but, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's very dark. Number two, Whenever I, I don't have a TV or radio appearance or a secular event, my company will allow me to do mission work and worship leading. I put that in the contract. Yeah, and it's, it's hard for an up-and-coming K-pop artist to be that bold in front of the CEO. But God, he gave me the boldness. And, and because I was there um, because of Matthew 6.33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And all these things shall be added unto you. 
I was seeking the kingdom. So, so, I, um, so God gave me the boldness because it wasn't for myself at all. And after a couple appearances and I became the number one search word on Korean Google called neighbor. Yeah, I'm not bragging, but uh, it kind of does sound like I'm bragging. But I'm not bragging. God was, God helped me to be the number one search word of uh, Brian Kim or Kim Brian. And a lot of non-Christian kids, they messaged me on my uh, social media. And, and they asked me, um, church is fake. God is fake. Why do you believe in Jesus? And through those conversations, I was able to mentor and disciple and really, really reach out to non-Christians in South Korea. Yeah. But it was tough because my CEO, he wouldn't let me at first. He said, Brian, worship your God once you're more famous. Do mission work after your K-pop career. And so one day I had to make a, make a choice. After about a year and a half of K-pop, I told my CEO, 사장님, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to have to stop this music career and go back to becoming a missionary and a worship leader because I don't have to be famous for God to use me. Yeah, so that was a little difficult, but I'm glad that God led me to make that choice. Wow. Um, just one last question, talking about... Oh, I'm sorry. Talking about a uh, discomfort. Yeah. yeah. Tina looks a little oh. <laughs> uncomfortable. <laughs> will, will Tina ask me any questions tonight? So <laughs> it was my last question. And now oh, I'm Tina. sorry. My yeah, bad. My so, bad. My so bad. If, we, if we just wait that moment of discomfort. You, said, you were talking about discomfort, you know, and so she was just like, yeah. yeah so just one more question. I'm one sorry. more moment, then it's your, all, it's your time to shine. Okay. So, we just, so this segment was talking about his um, past and like um, the, what has been happening in the past. Um, which is the same thing. Um, anyways, the last question is, if you have anything to sh I want to share about um, the previous two bands that you led, um, which was Jesus Christ Worship and Amazing Things, because you've done literally amazing things through that, and you've ex um, experienced and also challenged the Korean church and just music ministries in general. So if you want to share. Um, but looking at the eyes of the people in the crowd, uh, they're not really interested in all my bands. I'm not either. I'm just interested because I was part of one. But yeah. Oh, yeah. So Colin was part of my uh, band called Amazing Things. And it lasted about two years. And he's, he was our main keyboardist. And uh, we, we led, a, we led a, a worship at a retreat uh, for all Korean army soldiers. Yeah. I don't really like <laughs> leading worship in front of Korean army soldiers. It's not the most charismatic or, like, positive. And they're all non-Christian. 교회 안 다니는 군인들 앞에서 예배인도 헐. And we were there, Colin, me, other singers, and random band members. We weren't a team, just we're a project for three days, you know. And um, that worship was amazing. You know, the, the soldiers, and they began to worship. You know, we also did like EDM, you know, like, you know, we, we, we also had a DJ, you know, and, um, and he, led, uh, he led the keyboard and, you know, we led worship. And so it, it was more like outreach, yet um, our, our final, I guess, a purpose or result was, was worship. So that was amazing things. Uh, we, we led worship in Gangnam, you know, Oppang Gangnam style. You know Gangnam, right? Yeah? Gangnam is, is the most, most bustling area of Korea. And in front of exit number four, 사번 출구 앞에서, Christmas um, Christmas Eve night, um, we led worship in the streets of Gangnam, and people were like drunk, not uh, not in the Holy Spirit, but drunk uh, in something else, you know. And um, we led worship. We talked about Christ, and yeah, that was a, a great memory from Amazing Things. Jesus Christ Worship Band is something that I started ten years ago, and it was an outreach event every year uh, in South Korea for non-Christians and. Um, I remember the first Jesus Christ worship. Um, God asked me to donate my own money, um, 10,000 US dollars. And for me, that was like a lot of money because before that, I always lived in the basement in Korea. I had no money. My mom and dad have a big house in Texas. I had to leave that and come to Korea, live in a basement for seven years, and do K-pop and do worship ministry. And 10,000 US dollars was 
was um, seven years of saving for me. And God was telling me, Brian, I want to use, I want you to break your alabaster jar. And I want you to save souls in South Korea. And so through that event, there's one high school student named Yongde. Uh, he was a non-Christian. And through that worship, um, God was saying, Brian, do this for Yongde. Yongde will never go to church. But because he met you, this is only chance to experience the gospel. And I know you're buying him pizza. I know you're, you're buying him hamburgers. I know you're, you're buying him kimchi jjigae. But I want you to introduce me to him through this concert. And so and that was the beginning of a Jesus Christ worship, that one concert for uh, that Korean youth, Yongdae. Uh, just pour, giving out everything for that one soul, for that one, just for the one. So it's just, I think that's where we really see just fruits um, bared and just um, what, where we can just reap what we sow. Um, yeah, so thank you for sharing. Uh, everything until now. Now we're going to pass to Tina and talk about stuff that's going on now and current current events. So. Yes, yes. I think I can speak for everyone here. When I'm, It's just so amazing how God has led you through this journey as a worship leader, as a musician, as an artist, and all the ministries that he's been using you for, and also the current ministries that you're involved in, um, which we want to talk about. So I know that you're involved with the worship place. Worship, worship place? Yes. Yeah, worship place, and which is in, situated in Hongdae, and also Solbos and the coaching, all these oh. ministries that you're involved in. Could you talk, share about that? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. So um, worship place, like I said earlier, um, we started in January this year, and uh, I felt like, um, how, how do you say in English the... <laughs> so I think it's like, I'm not sure, is it the, the saints of Canaan? That doesn't translate well. So it's, like, it's like the ones... Yeah. There's so many Christ, uh, former Christians in Korea that don't mm -hmm. go to church. That's called Kanan Songdo, which means, um, I guess, believer. So they don't go to church, but they consider themselves Christian. There's so many. There's hundreds of thousands and so I felt like I had to do something about that, you know. And, and so God gave me the heart um, in January to rent a concert hall in Hongdae nearby. It's about five minutes from here. And um, we had a bi-weekly worship ev event called The Worship Place. And um, I invited other artists and other singers and other speakers. And like, like tonight, I would direct the, uh, the, e the event in about... 50 to 100 people would come every, every other week. And um, there's this one high, um, middle school girl. She wore her Korean um, school uniform. She came to the worship, and she, after the worship, she spoke into my ear. She said in Korean, I have a prayer request. Um, please pray for me because I want to evangelize to my friends. But I heard a couple days later, her pastor messaged me on, on Instagram, and he said, um, the student that came the other day, actually her father passed away last year. And she randomly met you at a retreat a couple months ago. And her life was changed. And she's the one that brought our church to the worship place that night. And her life purpose now, she was grieving for her dad, and I'm sure she still is now, but her, she's focused on sharing the love of Jesus to her classmates in South Korea. You know, K Korea, the, the young people, even college students, less than 4% are Christian. We have so many churches, and Korea witnessed an amazing revival. Less than 4% know the gospel of Jesus Christ. So through the worship place, many students, uh, mothers, um, you know, um, other, other Christian artists, they experienced the, the gospel. So we did 23 of those this past, uh, this past year, and, and that was a blessing. And we had no final sh financial support. Once again, God always asks me for my money. 
He asked me for my voice, but what he really asked me for is my commitment, and more than the voice, my alabaster jar. But, but I'm, I'm rewarded even more. It, it wasn't that difficult because God gave me so much more fruit and blessing and, and testimonies. So that's the worship place. Soul Bros um, is a company that I started that helps other Christian artists with their music, um, their production, their social media branding. And so I'm also a CEO. So um, I'm doing a lot of things. Yeah, I'm doing a lot of things. <laughs> but and all for the gospel. Coaching? Coaching, yeah. So I'm mentoring other artists because it's hard to come up as a Christian musician, you know, as any kind of musician, but, you know, as a missionary and Christian artist and, and producer. So, so I want to be a blessing to other future Brian's, to, to Tina's, to the Collins of the world, you know. I, I really want my ministry to not just end with my own ministry, Brian Kim. Amen. But I really want others to um, be trained and equipped and to be a blessing to Korea and also the nations. Amen. So, Soulmate with Brian.